Okay, today I'm going to show you how to make your own recessed male power tap like you see here in the picture. Uh, this one here is on Amazon for $53. That's one version from Datacom. Here's another one that looks like this here for $54. And then you go to mono price which is $47 and the reason why I want to do this um, is I don't for one I don't like the way the, the box layout is they just have where you run the data cables through uh, I want to do something a little bit different uh, and I don't want to spend the $47 here for this box and then um, demantle it and make my own out of that which I so I can just I want to make something what I've got like this one here using this box like that from Carlon which it has an angled receptacle uh, I don't know if you can make it out in the picture but uh, so the box there is $13 and then we'll need this grounding plug at Home Depot for basically four dollars and a face plate that you can probably pick up at Home Depot or whatever this is on Amazon for another basically a dollar okay here's a uh, shot of uh, some of the parts and materials that we're going to be using during the course of this video we have the uh, Mail socket, 1110515 PR, an inch and a quarter spade paddle bit. You could also use a hole saw, but the paddle bit works better. Uh, a die grinder, or you can use a, a Dremel if you don't have a die grinder, that's just what I have. A face plate, you want the standard size. This is a Leviton. Uh, 88014 this is a recessed kit um, just as far as the demo it's not the, really the one that I that I used in my project but this just, just goes to show what we're going to be using in the demo just a single gang recessed pit, uh, kit then of course some electrical wire some 12 gauge 2 uh, 14 gauge would work as well the smaller the number the heavier uh, the cable. Then we'll be needing a file. I have just happen to have this kit here that has it's a square file for um, notching uh, different items out, or you can just use a regular file as well, or a, a Dremel will work too. Okay, the first thing we're going to want to do is take get our faceplate. It's just a uh, standard size faceplate. And we're going to find our center. So we just get a, any type of a, a ruler or straight line measure there. And uh, we draw a line. And then on this one here, there's these, uh, these little notches or bumps that I'm going to use to line up for my center. It doesn't have to be exact, but we do want it to be fairly close. Okay, and later what we're going to end up having to do is these notches, these little bumps, they're in the way. Um, so we're going to need to grind these down. Okay, now that we have the center found here, we're going to go in, we chucked up our inch and a quarter bit, paddle bit. And we want to 
go on the back side so that way, because um, if we drill from the front, there's nothing supporting it and you could uh, end up cracking your plate. So you want to want to drill, we want to drill from the back side. Now we're going to go real slow. Take your time. And there's our hole. Okay, the next thing that we're going to want to do is get our, you'll see on our socket, the male socket, uh, we take it apart and you'll notice there's like a little notch here on the top side and it aligns with the housing here. So what we're going to need to do on the housing here is make a notch. See, right now it won't fit. While we're on that subject about it, things fitting, this is the uh, a regular pre-made faceplate that already has the hole drilled in it. And this is the one that we made. Now this hole, this one here is just a little bit bigger. Um, so if we get our housing, you would say, okay, from the back side, this fits in, but it's not going to work this way. We need to come from the front side, and it doesn't really meet our what we need to do because, for one, it spins in here, and uh, we want to make this solid. It's just a it's just a little bit too big by about a sixteenth of an inch or so. So we can't use the standard made plate. That's why we have to drill. So what we now, what we need to do is we need to make our notch. We need to notch this out here. So on the back side where we, we have our center, we just measure out. So we measure out 5 sixteenths. Total there, there, and then a sixteenth inch deep. Okay, and we're going to make a notch, square notch here, here, and there. Okay, just finishing up making that notch, as you can see here. Okay, it only took a few minutes to do and you'll see that it fits in secure. Okay, now that we got the notch made, we have to remove these protrusions, these little indentations here because the housing they won't, it doesn't fit flush. So we need to have this fit flush. So I'm going to take the bit that I, uh, the die grinder bit, and just grind these down, either that or a Dremel, however way you want to do it. They just need to be perfectly smooth with the faceplate. Okay, I'm just finishing up. Taking, getting rid of those notches on here. Okay, we're smooth. Okay, so now you'll have the, your wires coming out of the wall. 
First thing you're going to want to do is put on this housing. You slip it over. Then you put on the face plate. And then you attach the wires. Now on attaching the wires, uh, normally you'll see the the, the spades will be, one of them will be polarized, but on this receptacle it's not polarized. Uh, even though that's the case, I still suggest you conform to the uh, wiring code, which is putting the white wire, the white wire here, to the silver terminal, but that's the neutral wire, and then the black power wire goes to the brass colored terminal. And then, of course, your ground goes to the green, which is just the bare wire. Okay, so then that way we conform to our uh, electrical standards and keep us safe. And once that's done, you just line up the notch with the housing. And then you'll have to line up the notch on the housing is here, too, as well. Okay, getting the uh, housing to line up, it can be a little bit tricky um, because just because the wall plate takes up some of the space in besides here. So once you get it lined up though, all it takes is like oh, about three quarters of a turn on each of these screws. And that gets it uh, secured. And, this, and as you can see, even though the screws aren't probably using the full capability of the depth. Um, it's, this isn't going anywhere. Now one last thing that we're going to want to do <clears throat> is just tighten down the connection back here to hold the wires in place because remember uh, that that gang box that we're using is actually a low voltage kit and there is no uh, protective housing um, to shield the electrical wires so uh, this is a high voltage setup here and we're using it in a low voltage kit but with this casing here uh, as you can see we're protected it's uh, not going to cause any problems so just to give you a better visual, this would be in the wall. The gang box would be in the wall. You have your wires coming out. Then you would attach it all together. And this would be in the wall. And then they would go like that. And you attach your screws. And there you have your recessed male receptacle. And uh, I'll show you a, an example of how I used it uh, in my home. Okay, this here is the uh, back side of my entertainment unit. So I've got my receiver, all my wires, and then it goes, this is the uh, male power tap. So let me remove the HDMI cable here and my ethernet. And you'll see this is the The power tap and I put a label on there saying this is a uh, a non-energized inlet to my uh, HD TV which is up here up through the wall so as you can see this is how I have my setup I got my connections to the TV in this angled box like this and then my speaker wires as well. And that's up to the TV. There you go. Any questions, any comments, please leave them below. Have a great day.